pass it from New York City, cold New York City. I'm Nadia Nirofitu. This is The Rundown. <laughs> Where I like to interview people I admire on the run. Sometimes the soundtrack always helps. <laughs> Meeting up with Myrna Valerio, aka the Myrnavator. She is, where do I begin? She is a Juilliard trained singer and pianist. She's a, a teacher, a Spanish teacher. She's a mother. She runs trail marathons, ultra marathons, normal marathons, Ragnar relays. She does it all. She's absolutely inspiring and she's changing the way uh, we understand what it means to be a trail runner or a runner of an ultra marathon. I'm super inspired by her. So let's go. By the Yayoi Kusama. Oh, beautiful. Are you ready to go for a run? Let's go. Let's I'm ready to go for a slow run. Yeah. What about you? I know, and it's so cold. I'm, like, I'm trying to remember what it's like. Get moving, right? <laughs> but you should know, because you're from here originally. I am. I am a Brooklynite. From Brooklyn. Look at the clouds. <laughs> I love this. And it's not a New York video if you don't have a siren going off. Every time I do like a podcast interview or something. Oh, sorry, Richard. There's always like ambulance sirens. I come at my mom's house because she lives across from the from a hospital. Oh yeah. And there's a police precinct it's like around the corner. So I always feel right at home. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been following you uh, through your blog uh, and your writings on the, the women's running magazine, mm -hmm. the website. You know what I just love about it is it, it's expanding what we know, you know, or what is accepted. Or what is seen as the usual, the norm of what it means to be a runner. Yeah, know? I think it's just, um, you know, with me and other people like Kelly Roberts yeah. and other, you know, people who say, when they say are change makers, mm -hmm. I think we're just normalizing the idea that there are different types of bodies. Yeah, exactly. Um, doing everything. Yes. All the things that you are. You're a teacher, a, a singer, a pianist, a mother. But running was there from the beginning, like from high school? Uh, from high school. Yeah. yeah I, I use running to get better yes. at field hockey and lacrosse. When did you know you wanted to do the longer runs so that you would actually, that you could do them? So, I'll stop for this. I had this health scare yeah. in 2008 where I thought I was having a heart yes, attack. Yes. And um, that prompted me after a visit with a cardiologist. Uh, it wasn't a heart attack, yeah. it was a panic attack, but all of those events prompted me to start running again after a four year hiatus. Yeah. Doing 5Ks again, uh, which grew to 10Ks, half marathons. And I just really love the training. I love what it did for my spirit, my mind, my body, yeah. the overall health of my family. A friend convinced me to sign up for a marathon, and I was like, really? <laughs> Fine, okay, I'll do it. That, that was the crop. what really sold me. The training for that sold me on getting the most, <laughs> um, <woo. laughs> the most time out in nature that I could. Yes. Doing something really good for my body and my spirit and my mind. And so, after my first trail marathon, the race director puts the medal on me and says, okay, next year, he doesn't say congratulations, or good job, Myrna. Yeah. He says, next year, 50K. And I said, really? Can I just like, go sit down, enjoy my Gatorade, yeah. you know, and die? <laughs> you know? So that was it, he planted a seed. Oh, wow. I did the 50k the next year, fell in love with that distance. I get it! <laughs> did, you, did you have a trouble calling yourself a runner? I mean, when did you Never. know you were a runner? You know, when I did 
when I started doing 5Ks regularly, <laughs> and then I found myself training yeah. for them, you know, not just doing them on Saturdays, that's when I knew I was a runner. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a runner. <laughs> but I never really had any doubt yeah. in my mind. You know, if you run, you're a runner. Exactly. If you run and walk like I do, <laughs> you're still a runner because you're still running. Did you have a fear with the longer distances a at fear? all? Yeah. How do you get through that when, when it's this daunting number of hours that you know you're going to be running or miles or kilometers? Uh -huh. What gets you through that? Well, I know that parts of it are going to be absolutely horrible. So I just <laughs> try to mentally prepare myself for that. Have some strategies in place. Have a good playlist. Oh, a podcast playlist. <laughs> but I don't allow myself to listen to it until I really need to. I let myself hurt. I let myself no! be mad. I let myself feel whatever. Yeah. And then I get over it. Because I know there's like 20 more miles to go. Or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I, I can't like be in my head the entire time and uh, allow fleeting thoughts to stop me where I am. So, so you know, acknowledge it and then I get over it. Has that helped you in life itself, or was it that? Did you did you bring that strategy to running, or do you think running gave it to you? You know, I think all of that happened concurrently, like in my work life, in my personal life, in my athletic life. You know, nothing happens in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I'm learning one thing here, I'm utilizing it and transferring that knowledge and that skill to another area of my life. If I think of the word teacher and running in the same sentence, it's one of the reasons I grew up hating running. Uh -huh. I think most people did because of teachers using it as punishment. Right. I don't remember having that experience. Of not liking just, running. Right. Of well, hating it. Of it being a punishment. Okay. Um, I've always had really, really good PE teachers. Okay. Even in public school, we used it for fitness. You know, you'll get mm -hmm. better at this if you're conditioned. And they use running as conditioning. Yeah. So, I did. And I noticed it changed my body immediately. My ability to, to have endurance, yeah. grit, you know, mental grit. <laughs> the most important thing. <laughs> and, yeah, and I just fell in love with it, the way it made me feel. So, that night stuck with it. Yeah. When I couldn't play field hockey and lacrosse, I just kept running. like pretend sprints but they're actually question sprints okay favorite ma uh, run you've ever done race marathon anything favorite one. trans rockies six that day was, stage race that was recent yes what was so good about it because it was so hard <laughs> <laughs> but i finished <laughs> is that also your favorite ma running memory um you know uh oh my god oh my god this is so hard um <laughs> you know i guess my my first favorite running memory is when i crossed the finish line of the Marine Corps Marathon back in 2011. Uh, the first I, one, Yes, right? the first, the first that one. Did. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite thing to do after a run? Jump in a sauna. <laughs> or have a glass of wine. Oh, I was going to say, favorite thing to eat then. Okay, drink. <laughs> wine. Wine. Red wine, preferably. <laughs> we got a favorite running movie or a scene of running in a film? I really like, there's a documentary called The Long Green Line. Yes. I love that it's about documentary. The school, right? About the school, the cross country coach. And I really, really love that. And I also love McFarland. Too. McFarland made me cry on the airplane. <laughs> I used to show that all the time. Your favorite thing about New York? Not that. <laughs> because why? Why? I know that's what I do as well. <laughs> the culture. Yeah. Well, even in some of the biggest cities in the world, you know, there isn't this kind of diversity. And, um, and you know, that's a it's an often used word that mm. makes people roll their eyes, mm. but it's, it's it's true. Like you know, you don't have a lot of diversity in other places. Uh, and that diversity that we have here in New York lends itself to people maybe understanding each other more, maybe you know having less cross-cultural you know misinterpretation and miscommunication. And so um, I don't mean to get like overly technical about no, it. No, that's no, a 
mean, that's the work that I that I was engaged in at school. So it's a really dynamic place. And you know, like if you like go to a, like the New York City Marathon, there's so many different people there. You know, and it's really a, a microcosm of the world. Do you think running has a part to play in, in in furthering diversity to make it something that's so it's, it's more acceptable to see people? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think. I think once we let go of this notion that certain things are reserved for certain people, and that goes in like in any sort industry. of arena, any industry, any area of life, once we get rid of that notion, like I think the world is a better place because like who made up these rules? Mm -hmm. Who made them up? <laughs> we did. Mm -hmm. And so, but we also have the power to let go of that and like and to become more welcoming to different communities and, and to different types of people, different shapes of people, different colors of people, yeah. you know. And so I, and I think that, that running and, and, and trail running in particular, <laughs> because, you know, because nature doesn't discriminate, right? Nature, nature doesn't have these like crazy notions of who belongs in nature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for nature, everybody belongs in nature. Yeah. And, we, and, we, and nature belongs in us. There is this, you know, I think there is a lot of symbolism there. Leading, running, being an athlete, you know, moving is for everyone. Everyone needs to feel like they belong. It's yeah. about time. Yeah. yeah, it is about time. Because there's no reason to ostracize people. There's no, you know, unless they're murderers. <laughs> <laughs> Just to qualify, <laughs> unless they're murderers. <laughs> awesome. Yay. Thank you. <laughs>